I'm on a mission to get this thing, the Zygu G90, onto FT8 without this thing, the CE19. Let's go along and do this the easy way. Less cables, less mess, less fuss. Okay, let's go over the physical connections. This is a Sound Blaster USB sound card. You may or may not need this thing. And they don't actually make this anymore, but I will link a Sobrant sound card down below, which I know works with Linux and is a reliable sound card for this type of setting. This is just one that I happen to have, and I, I really can't justify buying another one when I already have one. So USB sound card may or may not be needed. I needed it, and I'll tell you why in a second when we get there. You'll need your radio. Uh, obviously, you guys know what a G90 looks like. You've seen that before. And then your radio comes with one or the other of these cables. This is a FTDI chip hidden inside this blue. They call this the blue cable. Hidden inside this blue cover is an FTDI chip. And on the far side is a three and a half millimeter, which you would consider like a headphone plug or stereo plug. And this is how you get your signals in and out. If you have the black one of these, it's okay. It just uses a prolific chip instead of an FTDI chip, and you might need to find some drivers for it. That is your USB cat control cable. This cable here is where the magic comes in. This is all that you really need in order to get the audio out. It has an 8-pin connector on one side. It has a TRRS connector on the other side for uh, stereo and microphone, so headphones and microphone plug. This cable does come with an adapter to get you from the, the multi-connector that your modern laptops or cell phones or whatnot would use over to the individual connectors for a microphone and headphones. My MacBook does not support using this connector, so I need to use this to split it into different connectors to get it into my USB sound card. And on here, it might not be easy to see on the camera, yeah, it's not going to be easy to see on the camera. Uh, there is a microphone port icon and a headphone port icon. And those are going to be true. So you plug the headphone into the, the headphone. The, so the line out goes into the ears of the radio. And then you plug the microphone into the microphone. And then you plug this into your computer. So these are the two plugs that you need on your computer side, your cat control and your sound card or your cat control and your audio plug. On the radio side of things, the cat control cable plugs into the side of the radio. You've got a choice here for headphones and a choice here. It looks, it looks like a little man inside of a circle looking out at you. That's where the cat control cable plugs in. So you plug that right in there like that into the front of the radio, no problems. I kind of wish this had a right angle jack on it. There'll be a link in the description down below. This is the, the business end, the radio end of the audio cable. On the back of the radio, you have an eight pin connector here and this plugs straight into there. Couldn't be any easier than that. Certainly beats that CE19 thing. I'm gonna make these instructions as generic as I possibly can. I am a Linux user, so I will show you how WSJTX works on Linux, but to get you started, you wanna to go to this website over here. This is the website for the WSJTX software. And if you scroll down on the page, there's a couple of different ways to get it. You can get it for Windows, and I'm running version 254 on Linux. So you can get that, and then you can also get it on Mac OS. There is an extra setting on Mac OS for your sound card. So make sure that you, you click here to read the section about setting up your audio device on Mac OS if you're running Mac OS. Okay, this is your WSJTX software once it is loaded. They all look fairly similar to this, regardless of what platform you're on. I'm gonna go up to the configurations menu and I'm gonna take an existing configuration, if you already have one, and choose clone. And then it will come up as whatever it was that you chose, like IC7300 copy. And then you can right click on that and choose rename, and I renamed it to G90. Pick it and then choose switch to. So as long as it's the one with the bullet on it, it's the one that we're working on right now. So I'm gonna, Make sure I have G90 chosen. I'm gonna go up to file and I'm gonna to go to settings. If you're on Mac OS, you go to the WSJTX menu and you choose preferences. If you're on Windows, you go to file settings also. So underneath of settings, you wanna go through this general tab and fill out everything. Pause the screen here to take a look at these settings and make sure that yours match as best as you want them to because it's kind of configurable. If you hover over them, there is usually a tool tip that pops up there it is, and it'll tell you a little bit more of a description of what's going on there. Make sure you fill out your call sign, yours, not mine, and your grid square, yours, 
not mine. In order to find your Maidenhead grid square, you go to this website, whatsmylocator.co.uk, link in the description down below for you. And where it says type in your address, you can just type in your zip code. Mine is luck, Wisconsin 548. 54853. I hit search. And we come right in on Luck, Wisconsin, and it's telling me my grid square is EN35SN. And you really just need the first four digits of that for WSJTX. So EN35, there you go. So again, take a look at all of these settings. Let's go to the radio tab where we pick the radio. There is a setting in the latest version of WSJTX for the Zygu G90. Maybe it's my radio, maybe it's a bad setting. I don't know what's going on, but it doesn't work for me. It will gain cat control, it will change the frequency, and then every so often it will just lose its mind, and then it will regain control and change the frequency and then lose its mind again. So I'm not using that one, that's not good for me. Uh, I picked the ICOM 7000 from the list up here. And that seems like it works just fine. I haven't had any problems with it. Dev TTY USB zero is my COM port for this. There's a couple of different ways to find this out. Uh, on Windows, you can go into Device Manager. It'll be COM1, COM2, COM5, something like that underneath of serial ports. And you can unplug it. It should disappear. You can plug it back in. It should reappear. That's how you figure that out. On Mac OS or on Linux, it's going to have some name like this. And you can find it in the same way that I'm going to show you now on both Mac OS and on Linux. I'm going to go up and choose. First, I'm going to get out of WSJTX. WSJTX doesn't like it when you unplug serial ports out from underneath of it. So I'm going to exit that. I'm going to open up a terminal. I'm going to do ls slash dev slash tty star. And you're going to see that this last one here is dev tty usb zero. It may show up somewhere else in the list. It's not important. What's important is that you're going to compare this list. I'm going to unplug the radio to what it looks like when it's not plugged in. And you'll notice that dev TTY USB zero, when the card is plugged in, when the USB cable is plugged in, shows up and it disappears when it's not plugged in. On Mac OS, it's gonna show up in the in the front side of the list and it's gonna have a name like TTY.USB14011 or something along those lines. So let's plug it back in. And on Linux, there's another way to take a look at this. My friend Don N5SKT told me that about this, refreshed my memory of this old trick, run D message, D-M-E-S-G. This is the thing that shows you all of the kernel messages and the very last thing it's going to say is you just plug something in. New full speed USB device number nine is plugged in and it is a USB to serial device and its manufacturer is FTDI and it is connected, detected, FT232BM. But what the important part is, is this last little bit out here at the end, TTY USB zero. Does that look familiar? There you go. There's a reason for that. That's because that's what we need to use. Let me get back into WSJTX and we'll pick up right where we left off. And let's get back into the radio settings tab. Okay, so follow along with these settings here and uh, pause the screen if you need to see them. And we'll go right through. So baud rate set to 19200. Data bits is set to eight. Stop bits is set to one. Handshake is set to default. DTR is set high. RTS is set low. CAT is your PTT method. Your mode is USB. We're gonna tell the radio to use the line in, line out instead of using the microphone. So you just wanna set this to USB. The G90 doesn't have a USB data mode like most radios have. Split operation set this to none. And then you can hit test CAT. And it will turn green. I've noticed that it's actually pretty slow to make these changes. So be patient when you press the test CAT button. We also want to test the PTT to make sure that works. And that should turn red and your radio should go into transmit mode. And it does. Okay, under audio, I am using the Creative Lab Sound Blaster X-Fi Go Pro. So when you drop down this list, you're going to see a lot of different devices here. There's going to be one that kind of stands out, kind of makes sense. In my case, I know I'm using a Creative Lab Sound Blaster device. So it's going to have something like Creative Lab Sound Blaster. For input, you're going to want to pick the one that says input. And for output, same same drill, same deal. You're going to want to pick the one that says output from your list. So for other radios, it might say USB codec. It might say Texas Instruments, Burr Brown. It'll still say input and output on it. And it should be somewhat different than your normal sound card. If you are able to run your machine and test this out, save yourself some money, save yourself some time, or just buy the Sovereign card because it's not that expensive. I'm going to unplug the sound card. It's gone, 
And then when I drop this list down, that's not going to be there. If I was lucky enough to be able to plug that audio cable directly into the laptop, I would pick whatever made sense as the audio input device. Yours might say like Realtek Audio or ESS Audio or something along those lines. But again, it should be something fairly obvious to you. Those are your settings for that. If you are going to use the cable without using any type of external sound interface, you might get some noise between your radio and your computer because of the noises inside of the computer might get picked up along the sound chain. That's typically why people use an external sound device or they will make a, a, a decoupled transformer or an optical coupled transformer as opposed to a physical wired device so that that noise disappears between the radio and the computer. And typically it is noise that's generated by the computer internally. I'm gonna plug that back in. And then all the rest of this stuff, I don't change any of the rest of this stuff. You can mess with this to your heart's content. Enjoy yourself. That's what ham radio is all about. Making changes and seeing what happens. You'll know that you got it right because this waterfall display down here will start showing what looks like FT8 signals. Each one of these individual columns that start to show up are different FT8 signals. And then each one of the rows is an alternating timeline. Make sure that your computer has its time synchronized. If you're wanting to know if your time is right, there's a website you can go to called time.is and it will figure out based on your computer's location from the internet service provider that you have. Mine thinks I'm in Milltown. That's actually where they are, not where I am. And it will tell you your current time. That's 8.03 PM. And it says my time is exact. And that'll make sure that your signals are in sync with the network that you're trying to communicate with because that's one of the pieces of magic that makes FT8 work. This is 20 watts into a DX commander and you can see that we're making contacts on most of the continental US, a couple into Canada and some into Mexico and some out across the pond into Europe and Asia area. We have one into Alaska and then Everybody else is just getting up for the morning, so nothing over there. Okay, I've been doing some FT8 for a while. The radio is going into cool down mode and we're losing some temperature here. We're at 88, 89 degrees Fahrenheit, 31 degrees Celsius for those of you playing along across the pond. I have run this thing up to 110 Fahrenheit and that's when I started to not like it and I have a little fan sitting under here that is cooling it off. I highly recommend that you run a fan with this radio. Radiodity sells a fantastic fan that will work for this and actually looks like it was meant to go with this. I'll leave a link in the description down below for that. This is the MFJ uh, 849 watt meter so we can track along with what we're doing power wise and then the G90 sitting here. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna turn it off and we're gonna walk through a configuration. Bye, how cute. All right, so I'm gonna do a factory reset just so you know there's no games being played here. I'm gonna hold down the function key and turn on the power button. And I missed. Hold down the function key and turn on the power button. All right, so main reset, I'm gonna hit yes. Turn the volume down there. Okay, so step one is turn your preamp. Right here you can see P for preamp is on. I'm gonna turn that off. You hit it once, it goes to attenuate. You hit it again, it goes to disappearing, so that's gone, that's how you want that. Press the compression button here. You'll see that there's nothing there. And then you'll see a microphone, which tells you that compression's on. And then you press it again to get rid of it. So you wanna make sure there's no compression there. Your noise blanker setting, you want that to be off. Your AGC setting, you want that to be double dashes to show that there's no AGC. So you have slow AGC, fast AGC. I think that's automatic AGC, I don't know. Aggressive, aggressive, that's what it is. We'll call it aggressive AGC. Uh, so now we're back down to no AGC at all. That's my thermometer complaining. Push the function button until that function light lights up and then you have these extra buttons down here. So we're gonna do filter low and we're gonna turn the big VFO until the filter opens all the way up on the left side. We're gonna hit filter high. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna turn the VFO until it opens all the way up on the other side. What else do we have under function? Power. We're gonna hit the power button while we still have the function light lit. We're gonna make sure mic gain is set to 10. That's the factory default there. Press the power button again, and we're gonna set the input to line because we're gonna use a line input from the rear of the radio. We're gonna turn function off, and then we're gonna long press the function button, which is gonna give us a, another menu. We're gonna hit next until we get to volume 
in and we're gonna set this to eight. That's the factory default there. Then we're gonna hit the next one and we're gonna look at the auxiliary out and we're gonna set that to 15. So that's your audio settings in and out. We're gonna press CMP for save. And there's, there's five buttons down here, but there's four soft buttons up there. So it's a little confusing, but you'll figure it out. You guys can see me in the meter. All right, so I just changed it over in WSJTX to be on 14074. And I pushed the volume button to switch that to headphone mode. If you'd like to listen to it, by all means, go ahead and listen to it. Turn the volume up. That's the volume all the way. Oh, there's, there's still some settings below zero. So that's zero. Well, that's one on the, on the bar. That's nothing, and you can still hear a little bit of it, but you can actually keep keep turning it down past zero to get it to be a little more reasonable. Okay, so we've got that thing rolling. Now here's where it gets to be a little interesting because the other thing that we need is RF gain. If you long press the AGC button, you'll get RF gain, and RF gain is currently set to 50. So you can turn that up and the more you turn this up, the more signals you're going to get. At some point, at some point you're gonna to get to the point where you're overloading the, the sound card or you're overloading the, the radio with RF signals. So you see that little yellow mark there. I would turn it down. Let's wait until we get some more signals in. Turn it down so that you don't really get that yellow signal. And for me, that's somewhere around 70%. So you want to ride that. I, I wouldn't get it into the yellow up here. On the computer side of things, you're going to see this slider over here is red and you don't want that to be red. So I'm going to come up here to my audio settings and I'm going to pick my microphone input. I'm going to cut that in half and you'll see that that stopped being red and it's actually very sensitive. So I go all the way down here to nothing and you'll see it drops off and you obviously want more than nothing. So I'm going to bring it up here I don't know, I guess that's about 30%. And you can see that it's fairly sensitive. 30% got me 60 dB, 68 dB of input. So you just don't want this to be red. And that would be how you would control this is by your sound card settings on your computer. A real quick note on ALC. This radio works a little bit differently right here, an ALC in the 70 range, 68, 69-ish range. And you control that by putting more audio input into the radio. Unlike many other radios, a high ALC value in the 95 to 100% range is desired. Control this by turning up the audio output volume on your computer and mine is up as high as it's going to go. So this is what I get. We did it. It wasn't as hard as it seemed. I take that back. It was extremely difficult, but I took all the difficulty out of it by making this video for you so it'll be easier for you. It took me a couple of hours to get to the other end of this. It was a pain. So hopefully this makes it pain free for you. There are links in the description down below where you can get the cable, the sound card, and anything else that might help you get this thing onto FT8. Keep your temperatures in mind when you're doing it. I was running 20 watts without a fan and it was 110 degrees at 77 in the, in the shack. So I put a fan on it and I was able to get it down to about 95. I'm happy at 95 compared to 110. There is a video right over here I think you will enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.